Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, El Shai, Bashem, Holocaust, Kodash. Double honors unto the elder apostles of great mercy and the weak world. And Shalom unto the hopeful elect. This is Paya Allah. And um, it's the book of Ruth, the second chapter, verse 1. And Naomi. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of. Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the Mo Moabitess said unto Naomi, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. It, it, I shall really read on that. She went and came. And gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her and her hat was too light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Let me look up something. Du, 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 du. I'm just curious as far as what the hap the hap is. Okay. So hap is Marquara. 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 Yeah. Make. So it comes from Quara. Marquara. To be like me. All right, unforeseen meeting or event, accident happening, chance, fortune, accident. Mm. Interesting. All right, so let me read it again. So it says, um, um, roof two and three, and she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and the hap was to light on a part of the field belonging unto Boaz. So basically it's saying by chance, you know, which really is according to the will of the Most High, it's funny, I literally just read, read that on my son. You know, um, sometimes you read something and you don't even realize you're reading certain parts. So it says, was to light to, on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. So a lot of these meetings, you know, that would seem like chance meetings is a spirit really, you know, bringing you before someone to align with them. All right, so verse 4, and behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, Bayathlachim, house of bread, and said unto the reapers, The Lord Yahweh be with you. And they answered him, The Lord Yahweh bless you. And this really shows you, you know, the mindset of the people, man. Now, when you deal with uh, Naomi in the previous chapter, she blessed her, you know, her uh, daughters in laws. All right. And um and and this is a trend that I see, you know, building up and that bless blessing we as I mentioned in the video before, we see it come into play with Ruth, all right. Or oh, we're gonna see it come to fruition now. Even so, that's why I said on a hat, you know, and even when we read the opening of the chapter, we spoke to how Boaz is a mighty man within, you know, having influence and, and, and wealth within the land all right and by chance she wound up on her kin you know her kindred um her her, her husband-in-law's family all right to where you know she was gleaning for that and even with ruth just showing you the humility of ruth because his brothers that mess with more by test women i know a few in the camp all right and um basically or I'm in more of the same kind of thing. The fact that she even said she was in, it shows she was just chilling in the house and she said, look, I'm going to go and get some bread. She was being industrious, right? Going out, we need some bread, you know, mother, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to go and glean, you know, 
the fields for some bread and then come back with something for you. All right. But showing you that, you know, the blessing of the Lord is, is, is overflowing because both uh, Naomi, Boaz, both of these individuals are very, you know, fervent in spirit, blessing people. All right. And you can see that. Although um, at this moment in time, Naomi, otherwise known as Mara, is in a better state of being. We're going to see through the progression of this story how, how, how she's going to be blessed. All right, verse 5. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Mar. Right, and this kind of news will travel quickly, especially in the fact that they're all kindred within that town of Bayaflaham Yahweh. All right. Verse 7, and she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and hath continued even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house, right? So she was coming to glean, you know, as the, the welfare law put in place by the Heavenly Father, whereby if you, you know, you desire to eat, you know, you can go down to anyone's field and you can reap after them. All right, basically glean what's left, because when they reap, they're not meant to glean the um, the crops, meaning they're not meant to take every salvage every piece of the crop. They're meant to you know reap to the point where those that come after can glean what's left upon the crop. All right, and that's what she was doing. All right, and showing you even well, it's going to get into it, so I won't go into that. But it said. Uh, so she came and continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Harest thou not my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maidens. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art a first, go on to the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? Now, as we read, you know, the hap, maquara, all right, by chance, you know, luck, coincidence, these things are happen, but it's really through the spirit because, as I mentioned again, you know, I'll keep saying it. This story is all, you know, really shows you chance meetings is, is really, and we know this. It's the Lord, the Most High, the, the, you know, directive the steps of man. You know, the, man may think you're gonna do this that, and the other, but on the hat, by the, the you know, just by a hat. This is what's happened. And then even prior, when she's on the field already, before he's even inquired of her, what he said is he blessed everyone upon the field. Then he inquired of her and showing the manifestation of that blessing in the fact that she can reap and she's going to have no trouble because she may go to someone else's field and they may see her there and just feel like, what the fuck are you doing there? You know how Jake get, you no. Know, <laughs> Can just feel like, you know, just just feel like a way towards someone and be like, oh, get the fuck out of here. I don't, I don't want you in my field kind of thing. They can entreat them anyhow. But the fact that he made, you know, not only that you can glean my, glean uh, the field, but also, well, he even said reap. So, you know, he said that basically, look, and it's going to go into it a bit more, but basically, like, if you need war, you can go in, you can drink, you can, you know, the young men will aid you in everything that you do. So really showing you that blessing really heavily dropped, it fell upon uh, the lot of uh, Ruth. Verse 11, and Boaz answered and said unto her, if, if it hath fully been sh sh shewed me, all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knowest 
Lewis and not here, here to for, and really showing you that blessing in which uh, her mother-in-law Naomi spoke to coming into play. The Lord Jehovah recompense their work and a full reward will be given thee of the Lord Jehovah of Israel under whose wings thou come to trust. And this is heavy because it shows you, even though I'm saying that blessing is coming into play, if, if you know, the blessing of Naomi and the blessing also of uh, Boaz, Boaz is prophesying of a greater blessing coming to pass. All right. And we're going to see how great the blessing is as this story progresses. Then she said, let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord. For that, for that thou hast comforted me, and for that thou hast spoken friendly unto thine handmaid, though I be not like unto one of thine handmaidens. Alright, basically, she's found favor even though she's not part of his house. Alright, which is a great blessing. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime, come thou hither and eat of thy of the bread and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers. And he reached her parched corn and she did eat. So he eating some tacos, man. Some, you know, some corn uh, tacos, man. So, you know, flatbread. And she did eat and was sufficed and left. And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. All right. And let. And this is even going on further. And let fall also some of the handfuls of purpose for her. And let leave them that she may glean them and rebuke her not. So he said, look, allow her to go and glean the fields. Don't bother her. But even more so, make some of the, the, the things that you've reaped fall on purpose for her to pick up. And don't rebuke her. Let, let her do her thing, man. Let her rock out. Verse 17. So she gleaned in the field until even and beat out that she had gleaned. And it was about an eighth of barley. Right. And barley, I, meant, I think I mentioned it in the previous chapter I spoke about. It could be like used as bread. I think it was in the last video or something like that. I may have mentioned it in another video. But barley, I looked at this some research and they said it was a poor man's bread. And it speaks to that, you know, various scriptural references. One of Gideon, you know, come as um, being like a lichen onto a cake of barley rolling down the hill into the camp. So barley was one of, you know, the poor man's bread. All right. But reading on, it says, do, 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 do. verse 18. And she took it up and went into the city. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was sufficed. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And where wroughtest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she shewed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. And Naomi said unto her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord Yahweh, who have not left off his kindness to, to the living and to the dead. And Naomi, and Naomi said unto her, The man is of near kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. All right, which basically goes, when you read it in NLT, it says, uh, it says um, family, family redeemer or kinsman redeemer. Which speaks of, you know, when you really go into, you had the thing in the book of Numbers 33, I believe, or 35, I can't believe it. I can't, it's lucky, it's luck. I can't remember it off the top of the head. But it speaks about only having, a, if if there's no one, no man within that family to marry a daughter, or no man being a progenitor, the progenitor of, within that family. If there's no one to take on his inheritance, say he has all daughters, then he has to have someone of his near house, you know, immediate kind of house family with his, his same kinship to basically redeem him by laying with his daughter to pass that on to be his, um, you know, to redeem his family. And then also that goes into um, whereby if you're sold into slavery, you have to get someone into, onto your near kin to redeem you. 
you know, and ultimately Yahweh Shai is that as well because he's our kinsman redeemer because no man will buy us out of slavery today. All right, that we're still in. And he's the only one that he's bought us with a price, right? Being a mediator between us and the Heavenly Father. All right, but this shows you that it's heavy, you know, that that by chance meeting is something so written in the stars. And even then it's gonna you're gonna see how it's quite crazy. You're gonna see how complex it is, but how it still is a thing, all right? It still becomes what it's meant to be. Verse 21, and Ruth the Moab, Moabiter said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. Right, because it's near kin. Her near kin, sorry. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of the barley harvest and of the wheat harvest. All right. I'd have to look that up to see how long the period that is, but I would guess it's a few months. All right. Being during the time of harvest. All right. And dwelt with her mother in law. I believe it said into the summer in the NLT. And dwelt with her mother in law. So it really shows you she was what up in the house, man. She weren't gallivanting up and down the place. So with that, I pray you're edified to the next one. So shall I watch? Shalom.